The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm here with Wikibon.org's own Jeff Kelly, big data analyst, and our next guest is Peter Bonds, a senior research scientist from VU University in Amsterdam. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. So Thanks we love having computer science guys on, especially when they're also professors and also practitioners. Um, I want to get your take. Obviously, uh, we were talking to the Actian folks who have, have a nice little momentum going here at the show with this mm -hmm. hashtag, Cut Hadoop Loose, which we'll get to Cut in a Hadoop minute. Loose, yeah. um, what is some of the things that you've been involved with? And take us through the history of what's happened with this hottest database technology that you guys have. Thanks for the question, yes. So, I'm a research scientist at the, at the University of Amsterdam, but uh, also an advisor to Action Corporation. So, my involvement with, that, with them is um, that my spin-off, uh, my recent spin-off, Vectorwise, was acquired by, by Action, and uh, now sold as uh, the Action Vector product. And Action Vector is an analytical database uh, system that's leading the TPCH charge for the past, well, since its existence, actually, in the single server category. So it's a really, really fast uh, database engine, the fastest on the market. And it pioneered a number of techniques that are now becoming very popular. One of them is uh, vector processing. So vector-wise lends uh, its name from vector processing, which was invented by me and my um, PhD student, Martin Zukowski, who worked on that, and who we were the driving forces behind So take a step back on vector-wise, because that's some of the most cutting edge vector technology. Yeah. Take us through. Why, why did you guys do that and how does that relate to why it's relevant today? Right, well, previous to Vectorwise we had experienced um, building a new analytical database system called MonadoDB. MonadoDB is an open source column store. It's one of the earliest column stores and it's kind of started the wave of um, having specialized analytical database engines in the relational uh, domain. And, um, well, MonadoDB was great, but uh, we definitely, after working on it for a couple of years, had some new ideas. We saw new opportunities, and, um, and these got realized in, uh, in Vectorwise. So you are, vec you yeah. like doing spin-offs, don't you? You're a creator, you like to get you know, sure. tinkering and then yeah. spinning them off to the, the highest buyer, in this case, <laughs> Actian, right? <laughs> right, well, it's, it's certainly, it's, computer science is an applied science certainly in my area, database systems. You know, there is a huge uh, demand uh, for database technology. You see it now happening again in, in the Hadoop ecosystem. People are really discovering uh, the need to have uh, database systems there as well. So there is a tremendous uh, yeah, uh, opportunity to apply uh, database technology. And I think if you're a, if you're a good uh, research scientist in this applied area, you should do spin-offs. So I got to ask you. I got to ask you. So my co-founder of CrowdChat, Danny Ryan, Georgia Tech, Karsten Schwan, as an mm -hmm. advisor and a participant in our venture, um, he's large-scale distributed computing. But what you're talking about is databases aren't necessarily viewed as large scale. So I want you to specifically connect the dots for us. Right now, with big data, you have to go large scale. Certainly, the, the unstructured stuff with the do makes a lot of sense for storing piles of data. But when you try to intersect large-scale distributed computing with large-scale databases, there's challenges. Can you like connect the dots of that concept? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah today uh, Action is cutting, cutting loose Hadoop and it's actually uh, unleashing a new product called Vortex, which is the uh, Hadoop version of Vectorize. So the best uh, relational database engine around in the analytical domain is now coming into uh, Hadoop and really integrated in Hadoop. What I see as uh, Big data, uh, the need for databases in big data, it's becoming more and more evident. So people are using and adopting Hadoop 
typically starting with unstructured, messy data, running reproduced jobs, cleaning data, finding out things using data mining algorithm, but the output of those cleaning and analytical steps is yeah, less, clean, uh, less uh, dirty, so more clean, and more structured data. And in the end, the end products of um, big data pipelines want or need to be consumed by a SQL engine, or let me rephrase that, there is tremendous value of being able to use the end of the data, at the end of a data pipeline, of a big data pipeline in Hadoop, to have SQL systems, and uh, SQL processing there. And, it's, and in the spirit of, uh, of large scale, you shouldn't then copy out that data to some existing outside uh, database engine. The best is to really process also these SQL queries inside Hadoop. So that's what's driving, not only for Actian, but for the whole industry. So who's using, the, who's using the large scale data, databases that Actian has? What, what's the prototype use case, customer use case? Well, I'm a database uh, research scientist, so I'm not day-to-day uh, -day involved at customer cases. I mean, Vectorwise has hundreds, hundreds of customers. Yeah, but you don't need to talk customer names. Talk about the, the environment. What applications would uh, yeah. be in, would, would use it? Leverage the value of that. It is very diverse. So on our wall, uh, uh, we've got uh, all the customers, and they they come from the financial uh, institutions, but also social networking sites. Uh, energy, medicine. People deal with a it ton is, of data. It is, it, is, <laughs> it is quite broad. The adoption of, of big data is also quite broad. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, Peter, that uh, the Actian SQL uh, on Hadoop uh, Vortex. technology Vortex. Yeah. Is, is native to Hadoop. Can you describe a little bit of what, what does that mean? Because this, as you yeah. say, you, know, you designed the database I, years really, ago yeah. uh, as a kind of a single server environment. Yeah. When you say it's native, what does that really mean? Very good question. So I, I kind of think, you can look at it like we escaped lucky, in the sense that the design of how Vectorize is really fits uh, Hadoop and HDFS. HDFS is really difficult to port an existing database system to, because it's an append-only uh, file system, an append-only file system, and databases, they do in-place updates all the time. Mm -hmm. So typically it won't really work to do um, to do a straight port, but compressed columnar storage like Vectorwise uses is really not a friend of update in place. So you, in a column store, you actually are looking already for other ways of updating data. And this is what, uh, what actually is in the DNA of Vectorwise anyway, and that was, that made it for us really easy to go native on the HDFS. Secondly is, I mean, the second pillar of being native uh, Hadoop is yarn integration. So you, you got to play, um, you got to play with uh, resource management in, in Hadoop to be, to be able not to be trashed by other jobs and also to not get in the way of the other users of the Hadoop cluster. Mm -hmm. So it's so interesting. So when you developed uh, Vectorwise, it was not, you know, this was, um, you know, Hadoop was also quite quite young, and Very it wasn't young. something you were thinking about at the time. 2004, but yeah. Good mind, great minds think alike. Uh, and yeah. Similar approaches. Is that kind of a a way to look at it in terms well, of I the think, compatibility? I, th I think it's about latency. So the reason why HDFS is the way it is is that um, for Hadoop, you've, you've got to deal with network latency, mm -hmm. and and that led to Hadoop uh, and HDFS preferring very large block transfers and uh, append only to keep things to make the consistency algorithms uh, uh, feasible. So, but, I mean, if you look at what David Patterson, a great computer scientist, has said, is that the biggest challenge in, 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 in computer hardware evolution is latency. So latency is not going away. It's, it's, true, for, it's true for networks, but it's also, for the design of vector-wise, mm -hmm. I.O. latency is also a big problem. And that's why column stores end up preferring large sequential I.O.s and avoiding updates in place. So, in some sense, there, there are the underlying force, mm -hmm. the danger of latency to an uh, architecture of a software system is there, in both cases. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, and I think, I think coming back, at, sorry, go ahead. I, I think, I think coming back at, uh, let's say, other alternatives in the marketplace, you see that there are quite a few uh, SQL and Hadoop solutions that are based on what I call uh, wrapped legacy. So they take a legacy database uh, system and then. I mean a database system that wasn't designed for analytical workloads. So not a column store, not vectorized, but something like, well, very often uh, Postgres or, mm -hmm. um, or Derby, 
So an open source solution, people then put that as a component in a, in a, in a SQL on a Duke uh, product. The problem with that is that SQL on a Duke uh, workloads are truly analytical. So you're putting, you're putting a query engine there that's really not suited to do fast uh, query execution. And that's why, uh, well, vectorize is so much faster than those uh, legacy systems. The other point is that if you put Postgres or Derby in HDFS, you're getting to the problem that HDFS is append down. So you have to switch off basically updates. So there is no SQL or dupe solution right now that supports trickle updates. Now, even Hawk, even, uh, they all uh, disable the possibility to delete a tuple and uh, to modify a tuple. Uh, and for SQL users and use cases that are considered mature, this is a big drawback. And uh, Vortex is going to change that. Because Atian has this very different way, so Vectorize is a system that doesn't do update in place, it has a special patented data structure called positional delta trees, which are differential updates, so you're writing on the side, not in the files. And this allows uh, Vortex to support updates without uh, running into HDFS traumas. And I think with that it will also be unique in the market. So I got to ask you about the future. Um, a lot of database architects are trying to figure out two things. Um, what can I do today to create an architecture mm -hmm. as a database guy or an analytics guy that's solid for today but also gets me down a, no pun, in, or pun intended, a vector of, that's in line with the market. In other words, I want to create a viable architecture today but I don't want to have to go back and deal with rechanging it again. So take us through your advice to those folks. Mm, well, I'm not sure. So the, the thing is that the hardware environment and the workloads, they are changing. And these factors can change what makes up a great architecture. Another thing that I have to add to that is that to create a mature database solution, a SQL solution that's mature, that's considered mature, you're actually running against time because this takes a lot of time. And this is also something that um, systems like Impala and Hive are experiencing. A lot of effort is being put there. These are systems that are being designed as native analytical database systems. And they are on the right track, but the problem is they will need years, yeah. I would say a decade, to get to the maturity level that customers really expect from SQL systems. I'm talking about workload management, access control, internationalization support, wide APIs, complex queries, trickle updates. Doing all of that, windowing functions, uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And in the meantime, of course, the, the landscape is changing. So this is a, an interesting conundrum. Where do you see the technology heading? So what's around the corner from a research perspective, from a practicality perspective? What do you see around the corner for future technology? Well, I'm very excited about uh, the democratization of cluster computing, which is now happening around the Duke. So you see really widespread. Cluster computing where? Around the, around the world? Globally? Yeah, yeah, in IT in general. So, okay. so it used to be uh, only big organizations who would be able to leverage clusters. And now it's becoming easier to do this because people are also standardizing. A very important factor is human skills, because to administer a cluster and to administer a system based on cluster technology takes skills. And these skills for, let's say, um, a specialized MPP database solutions used to be very rare. So it would be almost impossible to find people to maintain that. And now people are rallying around Hadoop, and Hadoop knowledge is going to be, is already much more prevalent than, let's say, specialized uh, Teradata uh, knowledge. And this allows the industry as a whole to adopt a Hadoop-based or cluster solution. So, so both that, both uh, standardized software and also cloud computing will really see uh, a much broader set of uh, uh, IT projects being, uh, being uh, executed on, uh, on clusters. And this is actually also in hand with the hand, goes hand in hand with the general trend that we are at the end of silicon scaling. So, uh, so that software shifts to software, right? So you're well, thinking... Well, if, if it isn't so easy to buy your way out of a problem or to get a competitive advantage by just buying a faster computer, we all have to go to 
to clusters, cluster solutions more in the future. So how do you see like when Intel's doing with systems on a chip, obviously there is some limitation on silicon, some are arguing there's some new stuff around that, but assuming that this, it's you know, getting down to a diminishing return on silicon, mm -hmm. what advances do you see that's going to really take it to the next level? Is it virtualization, data virtualization? Is it um, uh, system well, on a chip, software in particular? Anything, anything that makes it easier to scale on clusters will do great. Because, because if that's the only option, then people will try to go there, but until now, the barrier of doing so is just very high right. in terms of skills and, uh, and finding people to do that. Skills is a problem. Let me ask the question the opposite way. What scares you around stuff that doesn't scale clusters? What things do you see that you go, oh no, that's, gonna, that's not going to scale a cluster? What, what should people pay attention to as problem areas? Well, there, there are many because uh, Writing parallel programs is notoriously hard. So it, is, it is really difficult. So um, we are already in that world of pain right now. Because even on a single server, you, you also have to write parallel programs if you care for, if you care for, uh, if you care for performance. This is also, by the way, an un, a, a re, so the, the fact that you need to write software that runs on parallel hardware and this is almost black magic for the average programmer, is the reason why MapReduce, but also SQL on Hadoop, are becoming more important because these are standard technologies that out of the box run an IT problem in parallel. So these kinds of software are the only solutions to this drive for more so parallel processing. So you're saying processing. homegrown parallel processing path is not a good Solution. No, that's find. only for that's only for the for the few elite soldiers that can do that, right? That like can, DevOps. There are really, really few. <laughs> I mean, like I mean if you folks. look at your average programmer, this is it's true, micro truly code. black magic. For it's them. really high end yeah. computer science. Yeah. So you're saying is look for the, the tools that abstract away the complexity. Exactly. And exactly. what would they be? MapReduce. What else? MapReduce as SQL on Hadoop, and you see also. I mean, there, there, is, there is something between MapReduce and SQL and Hadoop. It's not entirely clear what that is. So Spark has been making waves um, with um, Scala-based programming. It's not clear. Uh, I mean, it also depends on how that's going to be adopted. But there are many algorithms, uh, data mining algorithms, analytical algorithms that, 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 um, that go beyond SQL, but yeah. So but tell us what you're working on now. Final question, what are you working on now? What's, what's getting you excited? What's the, what's the technology drug that you're taking? Well, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still very much involved with Vortex. <laughs> Vortex is announced today. And there you're is addicted a whole, to Vortex. There is a whole, there is a whole roadmap that, uh, of, uh, of yarn integration, of elasticity. Elasticity is very important to share, uh, to share a loop cluster between many different applications. Uh, all this update work. What's the elasticity piece uh, more applied to? Be specific on that. The elasticity piece. The, the elasti elasticity. So, I mean, once you go to in which aspect to, to the, the MapReduce? If you, if you, yeah, map, so a Hadoop cluster has many different uses, and one of the big ar arguments for SQL and Hadoop is that a single cluster installation can be used by different kinds of uh, users, different kind of jobs. So MapReduce jobs, pick jobs what have your jobs, and also Vortex jobs. And uh, the best situation is where the sharing of the same hardware cluster resources, and also the sysadmin resources that go with it, um, allow you to balance out the use of the system. So when one type of job is not very um, busy, then uh, this room is given to the other kinds of jobs. Because not all of them are peaking at the same moment, very likely. So the new version of Hadoop Yarn um, has a lot of new re uh, features that are really awesome around resource management. Exactly. What's going on with that area uh, of innovation? And what's, what's the new compelling thing coming out of resource, around Yarn in particular? Yarn, well, I mean, we would like to have in Yarn capabilities where you can dynamically, while a job is running, uh, the ability to adjust the resource usage, because now it's when you start up a, a job, you request a number of CPUs and a number of uh, quantity of memory, uh, but you cannot change that while the job is running. And you can view uh, a SQL Hadoop server as a very, very, very long-running job. 
And so we are right now trying to, we are working around this limitation of Hadoop. So it would be actually great if, uh, of, of Yarn. So it would actually be great if Yarn would uh, be able to dynamically change the, 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 the resource footprint. That would be good. Peter. It would also be great if, if, if network uh, would also be monitored because network bottleneck is, um, is dangerous for uh, both for HDFS access, it's uh, dangerous. It, it, could be, it, it, it could lead to um, query stalling. So, and, and currently Yarn is not really looking at, uh, at network. network uh, it's always bandwidth. the plumbing that everyone gets everyone pissed off. It's always the network guy, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, final question um, for you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, where can someone get information around Hadoop and um, Vector uh, resources? How do I get more information? Can you, is, it, uh, is there a public open source project? Well, is, it, uh, is there a community? Is there obviously Actian? Vortex, so, uh, so vector, vector for, uh, for Hadoop, Vector Hadoop Edition as it's called, is a, is a, um, um, is a commercial product. There will be an evaluation uh, uh, version out, so you can try it for free. That will happen at the end of June. Uh, go to dot.actian.com for that. You can also, if you want to read in depth about uh, what Vortex is, go to database architects database architects.blogspot.com and there is an in-depth uh, post on uh, how Vortex works, so uh, I recommend that. Peter, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it, great to hear from you. Uh, black magic and a lot of this high-end computer science <laughs> and the beautiful thing about, we had the same argument data scientists too, like there'll mm -hmm. be some black magic, some high-end skill sets, but the winners will abstract away the exactly. complexity and create tooling exactly. and automation for the yeah. rest of us. So yeah. we really appreciate the work you're doing and uh, good job at acting. They scored some, some good IP and great, great team. So congratulations. Thanks. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>